All right, so I finished with the basic layout of my matching network, and uh, I had to do a couple of things I can kind of zoom in and show you. So um, if we look at these capacitors, uh, I brought them in, or I designed them using uh, multiplicity. Uh, so these needed to be uh, about 1.7 picofarads. Uh, and so I have uh, 440 uh, femtofarad capacitor with a multiplicity of four. Uh, and when it brings it into the layout, it's going to bring in four individual units of those capacitors, and you have to connect them. Uh, so if we look at what was done here, uh, I just added a la several layers of vias uh, in order to bring the metallization uh, up to uh, one of the top metal layers. Uh, that's this purple layer uh, right here. Uh, and that's used to make a connection to the spiral and also to this other capacitor, which is the series capacitor going towards the output. A uh, similar thing is done on both sides. So there's a, a stack of vias uh, that uh, is making a connection uh, to the outside layer. So basically the top plate uh, contact is in the center and the bottom plate contact is on the outside. And we do the same thing with this particular capacitor. All right, so we have this layout done. Uh, we want to make sure that it, it is uh, compatible with the design rules. We run a DRC. Uh, in our case, we use a tool called Caliber, uh, although there is a Cadence tool called Pegasus that we can also use, and they do roughly the same thing. Uh, this is a pretty small circuit. The DRC should be pretty fast. Um, while it's running, I'm going to show you uh, that uh, you see this annoying uh, blue outline. This is uh, what they call a, a boundary layer. Uh, sometimes when you first open Cadence layouts, this is not set as an editable layer. So I'm going to right click uh, on the layers palette uh, and then I'm going to go and type in PR and the boundary layer uh, will be on this uh, B PR boundary B and D layer uh, and it needs to be set uh, as uh, selectable and, vis and uh, visible uh, and editable and uh, sorry, sorry valid uh, lowercase v is valid. All right, so you can see that it, I've already done that. Uh, I'm going to now basically just stretch this so that it fits exactly the boundary of my cell. And there you go. There's the completed layout. Now, when we go through and look at the DRC errors, uh, we're looking for a couple of things. Uh, so uh, one of these, uh, mainly the things that we're looking for are spacing errors and uh, width errors and area errors. These will be .s, .a, .w, uh, things like that. Anything that says uh, DEN is a density check uh, and normally isn't done at the cellular level, although it can be if you're going to have local density problems. Uh, same thing with these fill errors. These are things that are normally uh, checked uh, at the upper level of the, chip be of the chip because they're going to do a pattern density fill uh, on all the components. Um, and so uh, it, in early layouts. We don't need to worry about these. Now there is one spacing error. Uh, I'm not going to uh, go into how to fix that particular one um, uh, just because we don't want to uh, talk about anything proprietary, but I'm going to tell you it has to do with this uh, notch here. Uh, oftentimes uh, in any IC process, uh, they don't like to have uh, notches of metal. Uh, and so there's a, a notch between the OI layer uh, on this particular one right here that uh, will need to be fixed. All right, now uh, the next thing we need to do is make sure that our layout is compatible with the schematic or uh, matches the schematic. So we run a tool called LVS for that, uh, layout versus schematic. And basically what this tool is going to do is look for points of correspondence between the layout and the schematic. So it's going to look to see if it can find these components uh, in the layout uh, and it also uh, the pins. Uh, and then it's going to try and match the components with the parameters that are set as well. So I've put pins where they should go. So for instance, there's a pin uh, up on uh, the uh, top of the inductor. Uh, actually, in this particular process, it's important to use uh, the label layer. So you can see I've put a, a label uh, on uh, with the name uh, on the label layer. So VDDA on the OI label layer. Uh, I've gone through and put labels uh, also. So there's the PA label right here. You can see it on the 
correct label layer, there is uh, a VSS label right there on the label layer, and there is an output label uh, again on the label layer. Now I've also added pins because sometimes uh, different tools prefer to find a pin, but in this case Calibre is looking for a layout, a label as a point of correspondence, and so it's important to have uh, the label. Uh, but I've gone ahead and added both pins and labels. All right, so uh, let's run uh, LVS. Um, On this particular PDK, they're pretty good at, at uh, setting up the, uh, the the file so that it just runs LVS right out of the box uh, pretty well. Uh, but there are sometimes some customization options, uh, and we might look at those in a future uh, episode on how to set the customization options depending upon uh, what we're doing. All right, again, this is a small circuit. The LVS shouldn't take very long. Now, while this is running, uh, one thing that we're also going to need uh, is we're going to want to replace this circuit with, uh, you know, with maybe a box uh, that represents our matching network. Uh, and so uh, I'm going to go into the schematic. I'm going to go to create cell view. Oops. Oh, in the meantime, the uh, LVS came up. You can see uh, actually that the LVS matches. What you're going to look for is that the extraction results uh, and comparison results uh, both uh, show up as uh, passing uh, or correct. Uh, in our case, you can see uh, that they do. Uh, it'll give you a brief summary of what happened. It found four ports. Indeed, we know we had four ports. Uh, there were five nets. Uh, we know that we had five nets if we go back to the schematic. And then there are seven instances uh, that it found. Uh, so these two inductors uh, and then uh, it merged a few uh, of the, uh, sorry, seven capacitors and two inductors. Uh, here are the seven capacitors. Of course, uh, three of those were merged into one and four were merged into another, but nonetheless, it found all of them and it found the two inductors. Uh, so it found uh, a total of nine uh, instances and it matched everything. All right, so that's what it should look like uh, if things work out. If things don't work out, uh, I'll, I'll do another video where I show you kind of uh, some of the common uh, pitfalls. Um, but basically, it's going to look for parameter errors, net errors, uh, port errors, uh, different things like that. Uh, and if it finds them, it will tell you. It will try and tell you what they are. Sometimes it can be a bit confusing. Okay, so we're going to close that out. Uh, the last thing we need uh, for our hierarchy is to create a cell view. So I'm going to go to create cell view from cell view. Uh, we're going to go and create a uh, symbol. Uh, this should pretty much pop up, uh, and, and we're just going to use the default. Uh, and then I like to put my supply pins on uh, the uh, top and bottom, and my input and output pins on the left and right. Now, I just typed everything in because it's a relatively short uh, list, uh, but you can also uh, list uh, it, uh, things out and, and pop them in that way. Uh, and you can also change uh, the type of pin graphic and everything uh, that it will use uh, when it puts the pin into the schematic. Uh, for the time being, I'll just uh, leave things uh, as they are and click OK. And there it made a schematic, uh, sorry, a symbol view. Now, I don't like uh, the default symbol views. Uh, so you can, of course, kind of redraw this uh, to whatever style you like. Uh, for instance, uh, I like to uh, replace the pins I like this style. It's a round pin. All right, so my, my schematics will often have a, a pin like that. So anyhow, you can kind of redraw this however you want to uh, with the limited uh, palette of, uh, of components that you have uh, to draw there. Uh, I'll redraw mine, uh, and uh, I'm going to place it back in the schematic uh, for simulation uh, in just a bit. 
Now, in the next video, uh, the what we're going to focus on is the fact that the uh, we added some uh, relatively long electric links. So we made these inductors, which are basically they're partial inductances that are formed uh, by the fact that we have an alternating current moving through uh, metal, uh, and uh, the spiral structure here uh, just causes some reinforcing uh, magnetic flux. Uh, between the two uh, lines, uh, and that's what makes it uh, uh, have higher partial inductance. Um, but we all, we know that any long piece of metal, long thin piece of metal, will behave like this. So this interconnect between these two inductors is also uh, going to behave uh, like some type of partial inductance. And we have not captured that in our schematic. Uh, and so uh, we need to do an electromagnetic simulation of the structure. Now we can uh, try and do just an electromagnetic simulation of this piece of metal, uh, or we can do an EM simulation of the full structure. Uh, so in the next video, I'm going to show you how to set up an EM simulation using EMX uh, of this full structure. Uh, so I'm going to stop there for right now, uh, and we'll come back with that video shortly.